Hey pottery friends, welcome to the pottery studio on beautiful Bonaire. I come to you with a kiln opening today. I did a lot of tests and I have some scrofido to show you. So let's show you what we have. Look at that! All tests and over there there is some scrofido. We'll get to that in a minute. Just, you know, I'm just saying, can you tell how organized I am this morning? I put all the right pots with the right numbers, with the right test tiles on there for you. So I can show you what I did. Uh, I don't have a new camera yet, but I do have a beautiful tripod. But look. <laughs> I had to get creative or else it would fall down. But never mind that. Uh, let me set this camera up and let, let's dive into all these tests oh i have this set up this sort of kind of awkward way because i was trying out the best spot to show you the colors and um it's a bit dark there because it's so bright out there the sun is blazing so that's why i have this funky setup for you okay where shall we start? Let's start with a mason stain. I was um, inspired for new scrofito, thought I'd mix in a new color of our beautiful Wayaka tree. It's a hardwood tree. It has beautiful tiny little blue, um, blue lavenderish flowers when it blooms. I'll show you a picture. So I wanted to recreate that color. And um, <laughs> I didn't come up with the right color. Turned out I already had the color, but that's beside the point. I mixed up. Let me show you, it's, it's very interesting. Let me show you the colors I was mixing. This one is 15% of 5987 red, which isn't available anymore, but I think the 60, 61 or 62 comes close. And this is sky blue, 63, 63. Now, you can imagine if you combine these, you might get a purple-ish kind of color, right? Okay, watch this. Watch the difference. Can I get it? Ah, uh, yeah. Can you see how much difference there is in the colors? This is five parts sky, one part red. This, what do you think? What do you think? Five parts sky, two parts red only. And there's that much difference. This is a very nice, what would you call it, mauve color? Uh, and this comes closest to the color of that flower. So I will be using that soon in a new Strafito design. Now, let's go to the, the faux celadons. That's what I call them anyway. Let me go back to what I did last time. Remember this time, this one from my last kiln opening? It's a beautiful green. It's my MS-29 clear bright by laguna i buy that in uh, in powder form with three percent copper carbonate and i told you last time i want a turquoise so i planned on putting a tad bit of cobalt carbonate in there too to get a turquoise mm -mm. <laughs> hold on let me look for it this one is 3% copper carbonate, that's that one, and only 1% of cobalt carbonate, not even the oxide, the carbonate. That's not turquoise. That's a nice jeans blue. Still pretty, breaks beautiful, pulls beautiful. So only 1% added. So I need to um, put a lot less copper carbonate in this mixture or put more copper 
I don't know. Working, still working on that one. I also tried the cobalt carbonate on its own. 3%. Wowzers. Look at that. I think I can even put less cobalt carbonate in there. It's a striking, striking royal blue. And of course, it breaks beautiful because the, the base glaze is good. Then I tried, just for fun. Oh, hold on. There's a car coming. Yep. Ah, uh, uh huh. One and a half percent cobalt carbonate and four percent root teal. And the, this already starts to behave like a floating blue. Uh, most floating blues, as far as I know, have rutile in them. That's another car. <laughs> but on the, the part without texture, it's yucky swamp green. So, still working on that one. I also tried 4% manganese dioxide. Be careful with that one. But it does give a beautiful golden brown. And I also tried da -da -da, 0.5% red iron oxide. Now, some of them I sieved and some of them I didn't. It's just being lazy. This one I didn't. Look at that. Hardly any color. It got a little bit darker than uh, the, the clear, but it has these cute little specks. This one, I know, I didn't sieve. I don't know if the red iron oxide is longer in the glaze, if it then will be different, but, you know. Just testing away. Uh, those were my tests for creating a colored transparent glaze. Now we are going to get into those jungle gems. If you like the jungle gems and you like them at con five and a half, what, what were the cons? Yeah, this was a five and a half. Um, get pen and paper out because <laughs> this is going to get complicated, okay? I'll get to the scrofita or just, you know, if you're not interested in the test, just hop over to the scrofita part. You saw this. This was a gift from a friend, a whole box with jungle gems. She didn't know. I didn't fire at... Uh, 04, 05, I think they are made for. But yeah, you can fire them hotter and they will run. And some of them are quite pretty. Then I thought, what if I put a stable cone 5, 6 glaze under the jungle jets? All kinds of things happened. Look. This is with curry under them. This is with Scandinavian Blue by Spectrum under the jungle gems. And this is the combination I used for my uh, exhibition piece. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to do more of that, but then keep them separate so it's easier to um, uh, keep record, easier to see what I have done. Now, where do I start? <laughs> so just start with the ones that are closest to me here on the table. This is Jungle Gems Royal Fantasy. And let me find it here. 785. That's this one. I put it on top of. I'm going to have to get my glasses. Hold on. Add a sip of water. This is a dark test tile, but I put white slip on it. Then I did one coat of raspberry mist and one coat of that 685. So don't look at this, that's the slip. This is the result. Hmm. But fun, you know. That same 
Jungle Gems, same test style, on white slip, and then the Greenstone by Spectrum with that same Jungle Gems. It's got purples and yellows and blues. This is interesting. I probably would not use these on um, pieces for food, by the way. This one is Black Textile White Glaze by Emiko. And that same, what was it, Fantasy, Royal Fantasy. That almost looks like a blue chino. I think this is very interesting. For those of you who are wondering, I have a video on how I make these taste test tiles. So it's somewhere in, in there. Let's put this aside. Next one. It's going to get more complicated. No, I'll do the I'll do, I'll do the solo ones first. No, that's a different one. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, let's just go there. This is Number 965, Mocha Marble, 965, 965, that's that one. It's creamy with blue or turquoisey little, they call them crystals, uh, they're not crystals, but you know, that's that one. This is black clay, white slip, and then I did a layer of purple crystal by Amico, which is a matte glaze, and then that jungle gem on top. Not bad, breaks nicely, but for me not spectacular. This one is, it's amazing how different they come out, black clay, no slip, white glaze, and that jungle gem. This is pretty. It's amazing, you know, purple crystal underneath or a white glaze underneath. You can still see the blue that's in that uh, jungle gem. Lovely, don't you think? I like it. But only on texture, on the part where there's no texture, it's mm, kind of boring. Then, another different one. I have the yellow ore. I think it's Mako. It's a matte yellow glaze with some variation in it. It, it it's pretty, but not my ultimate favorite. Um, it is very beautiful with Georgie's interactive pigments underneath. Try that. That's gorgeous. But this is the two times yellow ore con five. It's a a soft sandy yellowish color very stable so i thought jungle gems at con five they run stable glaze underneath so i did that on the black clay so black clay one layer of that yellow ore glaze and again that mocha marble not spectacular but i did many more of these with the yellow ore underneath so that's the Mocha Marble by Jungle Jams. By, by Jungle, never mind. <laughs> now we go to Masquerade 970. It's a black one with yellow or chartreuse and orange kind of sparkles, crystals, pieces of glass in them. Hello birdies, can you see them? The banana quits. <laughs> so that black one with the yellow or and, and orange sparkles over a yellow or the matte yellow one on a black clay. We can skip through that very fast. <laughs> this one's interesting. I did it on top of first white slip, one layer of pearl white not oh no one layer is stable it doesn't run that much it gets a little cloudy and here and there you can still see the orange 
crystals but they fade away a little bit and this one is over oatmeal that is not bad at all there we go are you bored yet <laughs> okay 798 black iris jungle gems 798 798 is the right there that's completely black with white crystals in them i think we can go through this one fast as well well this one's not bad this is over white black clay white slip raspberry mist oh hold on there's a big truck coming oh not that big um i did white slip over this black clay because it didn't have white clay at the moment might still have an influence i don't know this is sort of kind of interesting this one is absolutely yucky it's on top of scandinavian blue yeah swamp mud green this is over oatmeal swamp green and this is over pearl white and there we get a little bit more interesting effects up until now i like them best over texture this is pistachio 717 where are you right there that's that one that's pretty on its own at con5 does run as you can see and it's over black clay white glaze and then that pistachio look that's almost like a glossy chino if you like the lust lustic the lustic rook yes rustic look <laughs> that's pretty that's very pretty Two more to go. 780 Mystic Jade. 780. Ugh, on its own. It's a little like the. It reminds me of Muddy Waters, which I have never bought because it's brown with a little blue. This is gray with brown and blue. Don't like it. But you never know what it does if you make a mixture. And I did this one on the yellow ore glaze. Well, we can just, you know, put that away. 718. Blue Caprice. I think I know by heart which one that is. Yeah, this is the Blue Caprice. It's a very nice jungle gem on white clay with uh, Edcon 5 or 6. This, this, is, this one's pretty. Black clay, white glaze, and that jungle gem. Look. It's very pretty. I like that. On top of yellow ore, yeah. There is some color in there, but not that much. 974, blooming blue. Blooming blue 974. There you go. It's a teal colored with crystals. Jungle gem. Again, on top of the matte yellow ore. Nothing spectacular. On top of Scandinavian blue. Not bad. Not bad. Two more to go. Seven five three sassy orange. That one. A yellow jungle gem base with red and orange crystals. On top of yellow ore. Yeah. Swampy. On top of. Is that right? Yeah. Purple crystal. 
little bit more of a party going on here. No purple at all, all blue. The last one, the last one, then we could get to the other pieces. Firecracker 756. That's the red one with sort of greenish and yellow. That one, crystals in it. On top of yellow, or I'm not even showing you. Now that is cute. Where that soft green comes from, who knows? But that is very, very nice. So those were my tests. And uh, I'm going to rearrange this a little bit so it's easier for me to grab them and I'll show you what else came out of the kiln in a sec. I'm back. Okay, it's a, a, again a little bit of a mixed bag. Uh, Let's start with something very interesting. This is one of my um, incense holders. And I was planning on doing a single firing again. Oh, we've got some company there. Birdies, let me, let me see if I can show you. Look at them. Can you see the other one? It's up there somewhere. They always come together. These are true PLs. Oh. Hello, gorgeous. Okay, back to me now. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, something interesting. I wanted to do a single firing again. Changed my mind. So what I did was uh, put this one with uh, the glaze on it in raw, not fired. Put the glaze on it, not fired yet. I keep repeating myself again. I wanted to do a single firing, I changed my mind, but this one already had the glaze on in the raw bone dry state. So I thought, you know what, just put it through the bisque and then, you know, later put it through the glaze firing. This is raspberry mist on white slip and it's completely different. It's not as glossy, it's not as red, it's not as pink. Raspberry mist has a little bit of pink in it. It's just yucky. Um, so I guess bisque firing a glaze first and then glaze firing it does do something. I don't know, but it's yucky, <laughs> but interesting. Uh, let's go to this one. Remember this one? This one came out of my last firing. Uh, I just couldn't resist. Look. Oh, a little cute little spoon rest to go with it. So this will be shipped off to Germany. I made butt vases. Always, always good. Good old black and white scraffito. Fishies. I had a nice purple. Now you can tell this is a negative space carved away and here the design is carved away. I have a blue one. Flowers. This is Mason Stain Sapphire Blue. Another blue one. With turtles. And here is another one where I carved out the design. Daisies in a turquoise and this one although it's the same idea uh, I've used on this one I've used a different glaze 
this one had a little crack. So I thought, yeah, sacrifice that one. Because I found a bag of opulence 125 clear glaze, had never, never used it. And I have read from some people on the internet that it crazes on this clay body. So far, so good. But I'll keep this in my stash and see what happens. And I might put some black stain in there or ink in there to see if it crazes at all. Just as a test again. I made some more um, incense burners. Good old Blue Monday. And this is Antique Iron. They are both by Opulence. I've got more Blue Monday. This is one of the mosquito holders. Flange is in the lid. Some felt thingies underneath. Also the blue blue Monday, it breaks so beautifully into green. The, uh, that one was a pretty quick dip. This was a longer dip in Blue Monday. I'll just take the lid out. You can hopefully tell the difference. Blue Monday is very sensitive to how long you dip it. And the longer you dip it, the bluer it gets and a little bit more matte. Incense burner again. One more Blue Monday. Now, you might think, what the bleep is this? Let me show you. Oops. My first attempt, and that's why it's a bit small. I just wanted to see if it works. A paper towel holder. Ta-da! Oh, if you don't put it in, it won't work. Ta-da! I like it. There you go, thrown in one piece, you know, with the, uh, the, you know, oh, sorry. <laughs> let's, let's put this one away. <laughs> oh boy, and it's not even 10 in the morning. Let's get to the scrofito bigger pieces. Ah, look at that one. That's a new bird bath. That's the pedestal with um oranges and per uh, uh reds and purples and hummingbirds there's a little bath and that's how it works choo, choo, choo. it's not cute this is the way more subtle than all my other pieces that i've made recently i did carve away a lot more on this one because i wanted the the design of the little tree branches to come out. So I had to carve away a little bit more. So this is a little bit whiter and a little bit more subtle than other ones I've made. I like it. Love the colors. Now for a different sort of kind of failure. I love the pot. I have to say it. Inspired by our DVD trees that are sensitive to the wind, so they are very often growing that way or that way, depending on where the wind comes from mostly. And um, in the good old black and white little landscape. I like it, but when it came out of the bisque, that lid was a little loose. So I thought, having seen other people do that, because usually I will, you know, wax this, wax that, and fire them together. I thought, let's fire them separately, glaze that whole rim to f hopefully fill in some space with glaze so it will sit more properly. That, well, it now slides all over the place. It sort of kind of fits, but 
it just slides off. You can tell in that, yes, you can tell. I had some trouble with holding it with my tongues in my bucket of glaze. So that glaze is a bit too thick. You can see it's a bit cloudy. So it had it has filled in too much. So now that lid will not survive, especially in the mine, I household for longer than a week. So this will be mine. Can't sell it like this, you know. And then I have one more to show you, which did work out very nicely. Look at that lid that fits perfectly. I made some owls. I am totally in love with this one. This one I did the old fashioned way. Wax, wax it, wax that, and fire them together. And, you know, isn't that a cute one? Yeah, I like it. Look, it's waving at you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hello. Bye bye. Yeah. Well, that's it for today. That was a lot. Uh, I hope you like it. If you do like it, you know, with all that testing and all that blabbering I do, please hit the like button. That way I know that you like it and I know which content is more preferred by you than maybe other content. Um, one short message in at the end. I am working on a lot of things in the background. I have many, many, many things to share with you, but they take a little longer. So, um, I will be coming back to you hopefully soon with some fun news. Has to do with happy pottery mail, maybe. Has to do with a shop, maybe. Has to online, by the way. Um, well, you know, all kinds of fun things, but they take time uh, to do. So uh, be patient. As we all are, as potters, you know, we are very, very patient. <laughs> so yeah, I'll be back with you soon with some fun news. And of course, with more pot. Working on a tutorial as well. So yeah, I'll see you hopefully in the next one. Write me a comment. You can ask me anything if there is something you will... Oh, I forgot one, by the way. If you uh, want to see me make one of these things, let me know, you know, uh, but I forgot one. We're not done yet. A long, long time ago, <laughs> I can still remember, somebody in the comments asked me if I saved the little thing, thingies of crumbs of clay that come off when you do the carving for your scraffito to do something with it. And as serendipity wants, or does, um, I actually did at that time. And I rolled it in a slab. This one has been on my bisque ware shelf for, well, I don't know how long. But I had room in the kiln, so I thought, you know what, let's fire this one. It is a cute effect, I have to say. However, I did not smooth it and um, these were dried up pieces from the carving into a wet slab and I didn't smooth it over and I didn't I didn't remember it was too long ago so I just took this off the shelf dunked it in dusted it off dunked it in my glaze but now it's I have to be careful it's very sharp here and there so if I want to do that next time, better make sure it's smooth. And look, can you tell? It's difficult to show you. It has, um, uh, what's the word? Slumped a little bit over these three little feet. It actually has the, the triangle from the feet where it, it bows, bows down. Oh, how do I explain that? Oh, you know what I mean. I actually kind of like that, but that was unintentional. Um, so yeah, if you do that, be careful. Make sure it's it's um, it's smooth. Yeah, I think.
think I think I'm really done now. <laughs> I'm done talking to you now. Let me show you my favorite one first before I say goodbye to you. Uh, yeah. I'll see you back soon with more kiln openings with a tutorial and some other fun, fun news. See you then. Bye bye.